Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Osman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. Our today topic is management of thalassemia. But before this, if you haven't watched my previous two videos on thalassemia, please go that watch video first. Okay, from management of thalassemia, first of all, we have transfusion therapy. This is like life-saving therapy for that baby. It can really increase the quality of life of that baby. For that, we have to give only packed RBC transfusion because the only problem lies in the RBC. So we don't need to give platelets or other um, particle or other cells of the whole blood. We just need to give the packed RBC because if we give whole blood it can seriously cause the OHA overload volume overload condition in that baby so only we have to give packed RBC transfusion and that should be from 15 to 20 ml per kg now depend on the baby condition we have to select from four to eight weeks like some baby will require blood transfusion after four weeks or within four weeks or some may need up to eight after eight weeks and the whole the target hb should be more than 10 gram per dl so this is our main goal like to keep the hemoglobin level above the 10 and that the racemic baby and this is very important this point each unit of blood contained 200 milligram of iron so this this uh, point tell us about the severity of iron overload condition because of the blood transfusion so please keep this point in your mind before go before going for a transfusion therapy that's why for that to 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 save the baby from this iron overload condition this two number management is very important which is chelating therapy or chelation therapy for that we have deferoxamine deferoxamine is a very good drug for the chelation of iron so whenever you giving the transfusion therapy it's better to give deferoxamine so whenever this is extra iron is coming in the thalassemic baby body it will remove it from the dead body so the dose you should remember that is 20 to 60 milligram per kg over 8 hours and this should be subcutaneous. This is another important point. And this drug should be given for 5 days per week. In a week, a baby should receive it for the 5 days. And the dose is 20 to 60 milligram per kg over 8 hours. This is very slow infusion. Okay, so first of all, before giving this defroxamine, we should know when should we start the deschelation therapy. So, whenever the serum ferritin level is more than 1000 nanogram per ml, then we have to start. The normal level is up about 300 nanogram per ml. So, before starting this therapy, we should understand like when we should give so whenever the serum ferritin is more than 1000 nanogram per ml or the transference saturation is more than 50 percent this look at the side effects of this drug peripheral neuropathy hearing loss visual disturbances and dizziness so it is still like uh, we can say we have this drug can cause other several, several problems but before going with this look at the benefits it can save the baby from the so many complications especially from the iron overload complications another management is ascorbic acid this is vitamin c and vitamin c really help the baby the, the thalassemic baby to excrete the iron and the urination so it, it also can help and the dose is 550 to 100 milligram per day so it's better we because it, it, it is like cannot harm the baby so it's better to give to excrete the iron in the urine another is splenectomy 
this this is very important in certain babies i mean thalassemic babies if they are facing severe hemolysis because of either hyperspleenism the spleen is working more and more rbc the getting in the spleen and getting destroyed which is called hyperspleenism so it's better to remove that spleen so the uh, dead rbc can stay in the body for a long period of time and can help the symptoms of the thalassemic baby if another criteria for splenectomy if the rbc or we can say the transfusion for packed rbc is required for more than 250 ml per kg per year we should remember this criteria this is very important in clinical practice so whenever in thalassemic baby there is if hyperspleenism or the transfusion red rbc transfusion required for more than 250 ml per kg per year then we should remove the spleen from dead baby but very important another point came into my mind before going for a splenectomy give few vaccines for that patient because the spleen is very important role having removal of the capsulated bacteria which is meningococci pneumococci strep staphylococci and few others also but these three are very important so before giving before going for the splenectomy please give pneumococcal vaccine meningococcal and staphylococcal vaccine because these uh, bugs can seriously damage that thalassemic baby so this is very important for still for a clinical and mcqs point of view and your exam point of view before going for splenectomy we should remember that vaccines and this is the treatment of choice this can ser seriously uh, cure the baby from these all symptoms bone marrow transplantation bone marrow transplantation is very getting very popular nowadays we 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 have to find the hla matching of that thalassemic baby with his sibling or another person if their hla gene is matching then we can give the bone marrow to the thalassemic baby and it can start it can grow and it can start uh, erythropoiesis and can really help the uh, thalassemic baby.